Hi friends, welcome back. And today we had a dev update for Diablo 4. And we're gonna get right into it immediately because there's a lot to cover and I've got a summary for you. Boom. Now I'm not gonna go in chronological order here. So we're just gonna get right into all of the things that I think are most important from this dev stream and then continue on as least important. So first, most important thing, first season starts mid to late July. Secondly, there will be new uniques and new powers for new season. That's pretty big important news that they will continue to have a live service evolution of this game and they want to continue moving the scales of power within our character progression. I think that's a really good idea. And also bringing new stuff always makes it so you want to come back for the next season and start fresh and try new things. Um, new seasons also will start at level one. Whenever you create a new character, you will always be starting at level one. And also the campaign skip will be available for new seasons. Once you complete the campaign in the regular baseline game, the next season and subsequent seasons after that, you will have the campaign skip available and you will start at level one and they said you'll start in Kyovashad, where the campaign usually began. So all you need to do is complete the campaign once, and for the remaining time that Diablo 4 is available, you will be able to use the campaign skip button, which I'm assuming if you're a min-maxer, you're just gonna be using it as soon as you have it available. And also, one thing that I deemed pretty important is that early access content that you unlocked during the beta is unlocked to your account and will be able to be transferred to your progression on PlayStation or whatever other form of console or PC or however you're transferring your character. But your purchased content from the purchase pack, the ultimate edition, or any other edition you purchased will be for the specific platform that you are playing on. So if you unlock a cosmetic on PC, you'll be able to use it on PS4, but for the specific cosmetics and items that you get from the ultimate pack will only be able to be used on the platform that you purchased them on. So let's get into the battle pass. So first of all, zero pay to win. They've said that they do not want to have any sort of pay to win whatsoever. The, the people have spoken and Blizzard has finally really embraced that the no pay to win future is upon us. Also, the paid track is fully cosmetic. So if you are looking to unlock anything with money, you're only gonna be getting cosmetics, which I'm all for. So you will be able to unlock battle pass tiers with real money. And people were asking the question, will you be able to unlock the buffs that you get from the battle pass with real money? And that is a, a resounding no. And it's good to hear that when you unlock new tiers and you, and you unlock Smoldering Ash to be able to put into the buffs that you get with the Paddle Pass, you can only unlock those when, you care, when your character reaches a certain level. So even if you unlocked all 100 tiers of the Battle Pass on day one and you have all the Smoldering Ash that the battle pass has available to you. You cannot unlock the increased experience or any of that stuff without the character level. So that means the free track will have zero pay to win and will only help your characters and will be just in line with the paid track as well. So it looks like the battle pass as a cohesive unit is a really, really cool way to uh, help seasonal progression and Give the people that wanna give Blizzard some money, some extra cosmetics. Also, Smoldering Ash unlocked from the Battle Pass will not be transferable through seasons. Kind of important just to know that you can't bank one season and then move on to the next season and, and try and pass through it really quickly. For the paid track with the Battle Pass, you will have two full skins and they will be unlocked on your account for all characters. This is not a Diablo Immortal situation where if you have all these really cool skins, you can only use them on the one character you purchased them on. Huge, huge win for Blizzard here. They've already shown that they have the capability and the tendency 
to lock something behind just one class with Diablo Immortal. And I'm so glad they're already saying, no, we're not going to continue doing that. Also, mount skins will be account wide. You'll be able to use mounts. Once you've unlocked a mount on an account, you'll be able to use it on the other characters that are on that account immediately as well. And mount skins will be unlocked for all characters. And it looks like there's gonna be about 90 plus tiers. Probably every season's gonna be a little bit different, but looking like 90 is their baseline. Probably gonna be like 96, 97, you know. And with the battle pass, they also talked about the shop a little bit. They will have a catered shop. It looks like the front page will be catered to what you play the most. And potentially, they didn't say this, but under my assumption, there will be discounts potentially on the front page of the shop, so you never know. But they have said that there will be a catered shop to the classes that you play more. Um, but you'll also be able to browse the rest of the classes that you don't play as often. So if you're looking at creating a rogue after you've played Necromancer for 100 hours and your shop rolls over, and you're only got Necromancer stuff on your front page, you'll be able to check Rogue stuff as well. All right, let's get into seasonal content. So there will be a seasonal quest line. It looks like for every new season that comes out, and this will ingratiate the player into the seasonal theme. So the seasonal quest line will be available for every new season that comes out, and this will be a way to ingratiate players into the new systems that this season has. Now, these seasonal quest lines most likely won't have much to do with Inarius or Lilith. It'll be more of a worldview of what's going on in the world of Diablo 4, less from a perspective of you're the greatest hero of all time to, hey, this is what's happening in the world other than your great crusade. I think this is a really cool way to continue to world build. Diablo 4 is not just you're the greatest, coolest dude of all time. Go save literally everybody from angels and demons. With the seasonal quest line, they will also have the seasonal rewards like they had in Diablo 3, but a little bit less stringent. When you're in a tier in Diablo 3, you would have to complete the entire tier, every quest in the tier, to move on to the next one. With Diablo 4, they're saying so far, you only have to complete, so seven out of nine quests is what it looked like in the infographic they were showing on the screen. Which is huge because when you have something like the Fields of Hatred, and making sure that your players don't have to complete everything, including PvP, in the seasonal rewards to continue onward, makes it so it feels a little more inclusive, and you're not pigeonholing your players into doing something they don't want to do. So with that, you will have seasonal rewards. And also in the seasonal rewards, you will have aspects of power and potentially other rewards we didn't really see, but it looks like there would be seven full tiers of rewards as well. So there's a good bit of progression in the seasonal content that we have to look forward to. Now, once you complete the campaign or use the campaign skip button is when the seasonal content will become available. And if you are going through the season and you are completing the campaign during the season, it will still contribute to the seasonal reward completion. So once you finish the campaign and you unlock the seasonal rewards to be available, you won't have to sit there and do all the stuff you just did again if it was available in the seasonal rewards itself. Also, they've reiterated you do not need to complete Altars of Lilith every season. That will be a one-time thing, similar to the campaign skip as well. But you can complete them if you're looking to cap out on your Renown. Your Renown will be reset. Your Renown will be reset, I think, every character. Correct me if I'm wrong. One thing they said that you will have to find again, though, is all the aspects of power. The aspects of power so far are in the dungeons and also what we've seen in the seasonal rewards track. So those are all going to be found every season, but Altars of Lilith will not. Once you've completed the Altars of Lilith, you will have all those stats and intelligence and all that stuff. Once the season begins, you'll still have to complete dungeons again to find your aspects. Not everything is going to be completely done when these new characters are created every season. One important thing to note that they did say during the dev update that I thought was incredibly cool, which is a little more transparency than we're used to, is they wanted people to temper their expectations. There is a large Diablo team that is going into seasonal content, but they are not all working together. There are two separate teams for the seasonal content that are working in tandem 
kind of leapfrogging content. So is there, if there is an issue that happens during the season, they might not be able to get to it, be it a balance change that needs to happen until a season after. So this is a huge deal to talk about when it comes to balance. And it always kind of makes me worry, but it's I'm cautiously optimistic when you have so many people and two specific teams working together, but separately to create this cohesive world that is Diablo 4. They talked a little bit about transmogs during the dev update as well, and how they wanted to continue thematically to keep transmogs and keep the gear that they have in Diablo rooted in Diablo 4 realism. You're not going to see any characters rocking bathing suits running around Kyovashad. It's just not going to be a thing. And I think that's a really healthy thing because you're playing Diablo 4 to play the Diablo 4 aesthetic, right? You're playing this game to enjoy the content that is this game, that dark fantasy game. They also said with items being unlocked uh, for transmog that there will be regional specific things that unlock for transmog. So if you're looking for a specific piece that you see somebody else is wearing and you don't have it unlocked, chances are you didn't pick up or salvage that item and you need to go back to that location or that zone to unlock those specific transmogs. They also touched on something that I thought was pretty cool, which was aspirational challenges. They want difficulties to continue to exist in the game. They want harder challenges and they will continue to develop new challenges. There won't just be the same world bosses every single season after season. There won't just be the same bosses in general season after season. They want to continue to evolve, but they also said that they don't want to make the player have a longer time through the progression of their character. They want to keep the, the time you're playing your character consistent for every season. They don't want to make you season after season after season have more and more farming to do to continue progressing player power. And so also this has been a huge hot button question. We hadn't seen leaderboards or any information on leaderboards yet. They finally gave us more of a definitive answer about leaderboards. Now I'm excited about leaderboards personally. So this is a little bit of a bummer. They said that leaderboards will not be in season one and might not be in season two. And they will revisit it. It's in the pipeline. They've been talking about it. They want to make it work, but they want to make it work when it's ready. And I'm all for that. Do leaderboards justice give us the right kind of progression or aspirations to look forward to without diminishing the achievements that other players can can do so one thing that was also talked about was the battle pass will be launching with the season not from the preseason which is the first six weeks that we are going to be experiencing in diablo 4 so that's kind of a weird thing because they, they do have extra seasonal track progression with one of the additions that you purchased of Diablo 4. So you won't be seeing that content until season one. And this is kind of all they had in the dev update. They did a, uh, a few questions from chat and from Twitter and uh, a few questions they've seen on the forums. And there were a couple things that I wanted to touch on in there as well. Now, people asked about hardcore characters and hardcore accounts. You have two accounts basically on your account, and that separates softcore, which is the eternal realm, normally what happens. Um, if that character dies, you're just revived again. Constant progression. And then they have the hardcore realm. If that character dies, you lose what is on the character, not what is unlocked by the account. So if you're looking and getting some aspects and you unlock some altars of Lilith and, and stuff like that, you, those will still be unlocked when you create another hardcore character during that season or preseason. Once you've unlocked a lot of these things, you will continue to be able to play on hardcore without having to do all of the stuff that you had again. You're just going to lose all the gear that's on that character and that stuff will be gone. I assume that the shared stash will have some semblance of permanence if the item is in the stash i'm assuming it stays in the stash and when you create a new hardcore character and go to that stash you'll be able to pick up that item but that's my assumption because of diablo 3 and diablo 2 and uh as i spoke about before with the campaign skip button campaign skips 
starts you at level one because you're creating a new character and also starts you in Kovashad. So those are the couple things I picked up from the Q&A and then everybody did a little dance at the end and it was awesome. So I'm all for this transparency and we have about three to three and a half weeks before the game releases. And it's so exciting to see the devs really striking while the iron is hot. In my last true update of Diablo 4, I was really frustrated that we weren't gonna get to play the game when they did the beta balance patch announcement. I thought it was just like kind of a fluff piece that didn't really have any hands-on approach. Now that we're able to play during the server slam and we get the hands-on approach, I'm a lot more excited about these changes that they've made and I'm excited to get in on Friday. So thank you guys for checking out the summary. Uh, it's wonderful to have you here. I really, really appreciate it. If you enjoy the content, you wanna throw me a like, also extremely appreciated, you wanna sub, I'll be here hanging out. Also, if you wanna check me out on Twitch, live twitch.tv slash DJ Montague. I appreciate the support so, so very much. Every ounce of support helps a ton. Thank you friends, we'll see you soon.